Hi everybody, it's Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we're here to talk about ELM. Now, <clears throat> before I get started with this video, um, just wanted to say, uh, give a shout out to the people on Twitter who voted for this. So I put up a poll about a week ago and I asked them what they wanted to see. Did they want to see Go, did they want to see Closure Script, or did they want to see Rust and ELM? And of course, Elm won out by quite a bit, actually. Um, and I'm quite happy about that because Elm, I think, is one of the great languages right now. I think it's really something. It's, I think, in a few versions, it will be poised to be one of the most powerful web languages, and it might even give JavaScript a run for its money. Um, <clears throat> So, anyway, let's get into this video. Basically, what we're going to do today is we're going to write a simple Hello World app. Um, and the reason why we're going to start so small, I, I'm well aware that most of the people who requested this video probably know some Elm, at least enough to write a Hello World app. So, this might seem a little boring to you, but the reason why I'm starting here is because, of course, we are an education blog, and, um, you know, I don't really want to just dive into the deep end and have people who, you know, have no idea about Elm come across this video and just be like, what the hell is this guy doing, you know? So, <laughs> anyway, so what exactly is Elm? Elm is what is called a reactive functional programming language, and it's statically typed with type inference, and it compiles down to HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, I know that's sort of fancy and whatnot, but basically um, a reactive programming language is a programming language that deals mainly with asynchronous data streams. Uh, it's sort of very similar to React. That's probably the best uh, example I can give. So React is a, a, Re a React allows you to render modular components based on DOM events, and Elm does exactly that. Um, of course, Elm is, unlike JavaScript, it's statically typed, uh, and its compiler will not throw runtime exceptions. As you can see down here on the page, it says no runtime exceptions. Instead, what it does is it will give you hints and little um, reasons why your uh, code failed. So, for example, if you look at this little picture here, it says the function join is expecting a string, but it got a number, you know, so you can fix it by just throwing a string in there, maybe, or by maybe using two string function or whatever. So, okay. Um, I know some of you cringe when you hear the word statically typed, and probably from your Java days, I kind of cringe too when I try, you know, when I remember Java, but... The Elm static type system is extremely versatile and extremely robust, and it's nothing like the Java type system. The Java type system is just needlessly verbose, and the Elm one is very cool. And you can do really quick prototyping with it, which makes it extremely powerful. <clears throat> so, okay, let's, let's jump in. So I'm using the Atom editor. Uh, normally I'd use Emacs. But I think for this video, we're going to use the Atom Editor, and if you want to uh, set up an Elm environment, I'm going to put instructions in the description box below, so uh, just check that out. I'll have a document down there that will explain how to install the plugins that I'm using, as well as the language itself. All you need is Node and Atom in this case. Um, I'll also link you to some of the other options that you have. Uh, I'd say next to Emacs, Atom is probably the best supported language for Elm, or the best supported text editor for Elm, rather. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so let's start. So how do we start? We're going to write a Hello World app, so we basically want Elm to, you know, uh, print a string to the screen. And by that, I mean print a string to a piece of HTML. So... The first thing we need to do 
is so we've got our file here exercise one.elm we need to use the package manager to create a JSON file so packet or elm package install it's very much like node it's going to ask us, it's going to say, okay, we're going to install the core language, uh, Elmlang, HTML, and Elmlang virtual DOM. And you just hit yes. And that's that. So it's done. And as you can see, oops, what this does is it creates a JSON file, which has our dependencies and our um, information in here. Uh, you can change all this if you want to. Um, when you add packages to an Elm uh, JSON file, you can do it by just typing in Elm uh, install or package install and then the package name and it'll install the latest version. You can, sele you can selectively choose versions as well. It's very much like Node in that way and it's pretty cool. Elm also has a tool called the Reactor. So let's start the Elm Reactor. Elm Reactor is now listening on localhost 8000. So let's open up our browser and go to localhost 8000. And you can see here, I can actually click on my my little uh, Elm dot exercise one, and it's going to just throw us an error because there's nothing in there. So, okay. Typically, an Elm project is divided into five or six different parts okay it sort of in a way it sort of reminds me of an MVC so a model view controller style layout uh, except instead of a controller you have a messages component and you have a uh, update component and you have the optional subscriptions component so basically if anybody, if for people who don't know what a model view controller is, um, the model part is where your data goes. It's what defines what your data is going to look like too. Um, the message part of your app, in this case, uh, sort of like the controller, it defines things that happen in your application and how the components that you're making will respond. So like I said, it's very much like React. So you are creating components inside of Elm and you use these messages to basically deal with the state of your app. Now you got to remember this is a purely functional language so state is sort of a very uh, out of the way thing. But we'll get more into that as we go further along as we get further into the language. Um, the next part of your app is the view which is typically the front end so how your app will look um, then you have an update component which handles the messages and will update the model accordingly and then uh, you have the optional subscriptions uh, element which listens for types of events that are external so like keyboard control mouse control stuff like that would go into the subscriptions okay um, and then everything is sort of tied together through a main function. Now the main function, uh, it takes a type of program. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of obscure, but type of program is basically a value that captures all the details needed to manage your application, including an init function, so an initialization function. So we're writing in Hello World app, so I can just go main equals Hello World. I mean, that seems like the most um, the most simple way to do it, but obviously it's not going to work. It's throwing us an error here. Um, you can see that the uh, add-in or the plugin automatically uh, exposed our file. So module main exposing, and this means it's exposing everything. It's sort of like saying uh, in JavaScript expose and then just leaving it. So here, here's our error, it's at main, and it's saying here, top level value main does not have the type annotation. Uh, that's one of the warnings, but the other one here is main value has an unsupported type. I need an HTML, an SVG, or a program. So I have something to render the screen, but you gave me a string. 
So basically we need to convert this string into either an HTML, an SVG, or a program. To do that we need to bring in um, a package from the uh, Elmlang HTML uh, package. So let's do that. Import HTML exposing and we'll expose everything. So there we go. Actually, you know what? Let's not expose anything. So you can see you know which functions are coming from HTML. So now I've saved that and it's throwing us a little warning here saying that we haven't used it. So there is a uh, function called HTML.text that converts text to uh, I can type here text to HTML. So maybe that'll work. Let's try it. Okay. So let's see, in the Elm Reactor, let's go to our Elm Reactor and let's reload this page and see what happens. And there we go, it's throwing Hello World to the screen. So this is a very simple Hello World app, very easy. All it does is convert this string into HTML using this function, and then it renders the HTML function using the main function to our here, our um, browser. All right, guys, so that's it for part one. Um, I will continue on later, and uh, we will start to look at more advanced com concepts as we go further. Thank you for watching. Bye.